So, uh, as I was saying before, uh, if there was any specific uh, gateway drug, uh, it would be alcohol if there was one. But alcohol is very much the same. If you send it underground, you, you lose all power over that element. And herein lies the bigger problem. Uh, for people who don't, uh, first of all, we all remember Prohibition, what happened with that. We got Al Capone, we got Machine Gun Kelly, uh, you know, all these big time, that's what created essentially organized crime in this country was the Prohibition era. Uh, because you have a substance that people want and now are not able to get. Well, people still want it. And now it's in an underground market, it's no, not regulated. And a large amount of the reason why we got rid of prohibition was for tax reasons. Uh, we wanted the tax revenue. We were coming out of a depression and we needed money as a country. And that was a very large taxable item to just throw off the shelves. And it automatically got rid of all these big time gangsters who were, who were dealing that. Um, now, for those of you who don't, uh, don't want marijuana legalized, uh, Usually the biggest argument that you have is the kids. I don't want my kids doing it. And I don't want my kids doing it. I don't want any kids doing it. Um, I don't really believe it'd be harmful to children, but I don't think, I mean, this is a substance that is mood altering and, and mind altering. Uh, I don't believe any substance like that should be available to children or even, even more <laughs> semi-grown adults. I mean, even young adults, I don't think are able to make an educated decision regarding their lives, it, not in any good capacity in any case. Uh, that's why I firmly believe that the, the age limit should be higher than 21. It should. Be, I, I really would like to see it set at more like 25 for all substances like that, for cigarettes, alcohol, tobacco, uh, you know, all, marijuana, anything. Um, but if you really are concerned about the children, your children, or your friend's children, or your community's children, you really should look into legalizing marijuana because if you don't want them smoking it then the best thing you can do is regulate it because right now if you've got a 15 year old son or daughter it is a thousand I would say a hundred thousand times easier for them to go get some marijuana than to go get a pack of cigarettes look what they've done with that it's impossible to get a pack of cigarettes I can not barely get a pack of cigarettes I'm 37 and it's next to impossible for me to get a pack of cigarettes unless I got an ID. You have to look 37. I don't necessarily, I'd like to think I don't look 37. Uh, but regardless, it, I'm all fine with the regulation being in place. That's protecting kids from making stupid decisions. If that regulation was in place a little harder or maybe a few extra rules associated with it, maybe I would have never started smoking. And I'd be much better for it. I wish I wish I couldn't smoke. I wish it, it wasn't even around. But it is, and I love doing it. And it's a personal choice that I make as a grown adult. That's the the ultimate um, uh, statement I can make. Is marijuana has zero deaths associated with it in the history of its known use. I choose to occasionally partake. If I was the avid user every day. Uh, then that should be my choice. Now, there's going to be people out there who live an excessive life and who have a, uh, a predisposition to just do things in abundance, okay, such as your overeaters, okay? Nobody's outlawing food because some fat people eat too much. Uh, that's just silly. And nobody's outlawing snack cakes, you know, uh, because people eat way too many of them and they're addicted to them, you know, mentally addicted. I'm not physically addicted because if you go uh, without snack cakes, you're not gonna start throwing up and convulsing everywhere. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna wish you had some snack cakes. That's all. I mean, this is not a. There's no physical addiction there. Same with marijuana. There's no physical addiction with marijuana. You don't go through withdrawal symptoms uh, at all. You, you might notice if you smoked every day all the time for years, and then all of a sudden you were not able to smoke anymore. Marijuana, that is. Uh, you'd notice a difference. You notice, uh, you know, you you just notice a small difference. You're like, man, I really wish I had some weed, and that's pretty much it. But for those of you who drink coffee every day, uh, and most people who drink coffee every day will have a cup or two or three a day. Try going without coffee for a day. See what happens to you. 
you get a massive headache. I know because I drink coffee every day. You get a massive headache if you go without it. And now you are physically addicted to coffee. Uh, the entire world essentially is addicted to coffee. I mean, there's a very large percentage of coffee drinkers. And that's a physical addiction. When you don't have it, your body contorts in a way that just hurts you. Uh, other things are much more predominant, like um, uh, you know, cocaine or crystal meth and stuff like that. Massive withdrawal symptoms. Those are massively addicted. That's really the only gauge of measuring addiction is withdrawal symptoms, physical withdrawal symptoms. Um, you know, if you take, uh, if you do coke for a year and then you just stop doing it, you, you're going to get sick. You do prescription medications of any kind for a long time, uh, not any kind, uh, narcotic prescription medications, uh, hydrocodones, um, oxycontinins, all these uh, horrible, horrible pills that, that doctors are just pushing on everybody. Do those for six months and try to just stop doing them. You're going to get violently ill, feel horrible. Your teeth will be hollowed out, it feels like, and most people will get the, their teeth are rotted out to begin with. Uh, from that you know just horribly damaging to your body and you're now physically dependent on those drugs marijuana is not like that it's never been like that um, nobody goes through withdrawal symptoms from marijuana you just kinda you kinda jones and you just wish shit I wish I had some weed wish I, how am I gonna get ten bucks to get some weed you know that, that's, that's all it is uh, so there's no addictive properties to it I, I wouldn't really worry so much about your children, but if you're really worried about them, uh, worry about the fact that it's illegal because it's much easier for them to get. A drug dealer has no age limit that sets. I'm sure they all have some kind of a set limit that each of them sets. I'm sure it's somewhere between the ages of 15 and 16 somewhere that they might set it, but that's you're relying on a, on a drug dealer, on, on, a de on a person that deals all kinds of other narcotic drugs. Uh, to make the decision for you on whether your kids should be able to have this or not. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I would rather see it legal for my kids, if anything. Forget that I prefer it being legal so that I could smoke it when I want to. Forget that. If I hated smoking it, I would still want it legalized and regulated so that my kids can't touch it until they're of an age where they can make an informed decision. Um, as far as it being illegal, I mean, you're just you're relying on illegal drug dealers' moral compass to justify what, what or to to say whether your kid can have this substance or not. And I, I don't think that makes very logical sense. Um, and as far as uh, a lot of people think uh, that marijuana slows you down, makes you stupid, I I just really don't think that. There are two different kinds of marijuana that people don't realize this. There are two different kinds of marijuana, and I've only just learned this in the last couple of years myself. There is indica and there is sativa. Uh, indica is predominantly throughout the country and on the East Coast predominantly. Uh, all we've really ever had up in this area is indica, and it's generally known as the sleepy weed. It makes you happy, makes you laugh, and you kind of get a little tired and you just want to lay back and watch a movie and, you know, pie-eyed, you know, kind of... For me, I like it. It does make me think clearly, and I'm able to talk more fluently and and kind of form good. Uh, I'm, I'm able to recall a lot of things. <laughs> right now, uh, you couldn't tell if I was high or if I wasn't. I mean, I guess depending on how much I smoked. If I smoked a ton, uh, you know, today, then you would know. You'd probably be able to tell that I, something's amiss a little bit. But you're never gonna know. I mean, you couldn't tell right now if I've smoked or if I haven't, and I, I would I would put it out to you. Uh, <laughs> please uh, make a posting if you think I've smoked uh, during this video or before this video. Uh, put down you think I've smoked, and if you think I haven't, then then let me know. Uh, it'd be a nice little poll to take. Uh, but in any case, uh, indica is generally known as the sleepy weed, and sativa is a very different thing altogether. Uh, you wouldn't think so. I didn't think so until I tried it. And sativa is a much more cognitive. You're awake. You're still, you're still high from smoking weed, but it is a much more. It's a, 
I guess I could put it as the thinker's marijuana. Uh, much more alert and kind of, you're not in that coma, you know, the, the coma fried kind of state. You are alert and you, you, your words flow fluently from your mouth and it just, you're in a different state all entirely. It makes you active. It doesn't make you want to just, I don't want to take a nap. You know, it, it's not like that at all. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, I, would like, I would like to see it legalized mostly uh, for the fact that I could probably get my hands on some t sativa if I had my choice. I'm smoking one of the two, it would be sativa all the way. And it's ironic that so many of these pro-marijuana people do not know this. I, I was one of them for a long time. I had no idea about that. I knew there were different strains and different, uh, you know, uh, marijuana plants that people will sell. There are the Bubba 76s and the, the Ice Cushes and all, you know, different, uh, different strains from different parts of the world and whatnot. And that's all fine and good. Some are really all that regulates is kind of potency. Um, another myth is that uh, this isn't your your grandfather's marijuana or your father's marijuana. That it's much more potent now. Well, that is true. Uh, the marijuana that's out now, uh, or at least the high end marijuana that's out now, is much more potent. Uh, we've just gotten better at growing it. That's all there is a limit that it can go to. It's not like we can keep increasing on it. It's, there's just, uh, it's just been grown horribly for a long time. Uh, there always was this level of potency in marijuana. There always was. It's just the availability of that very potent marijuana was very slim. We had all the Mexican swag going around back in the 60s and 70s and even during the 80s. Now it is becoming more on the forefront uh, where people are a little more aware of about the situation of marijuana it's becoming more available, especially with these medicinalized states. Um, so the the bigger thing is, though, is that that they propose they, they try to propose that as one of the dangers of the new marijuana. It's uh, more dangerous because it's more potent. Well, that doesn't make it more dangerous. In fact, I would argue that that makes it less dangerous because it's more potent. That means you need to smoke much less of it to get the same effect. And if you need to smoke more of it, I would firmly agree that uh, it's not good for you to smoke plant matter. Uh, I don't, there's never been any uh, association of cancer with marijuana smoke, but I don't think smoke in your lungs is good in any way, uh, no matter what it is. Uh, but uh, definitely cigarettes are much more harmful, and not because of the nicotine, by the way, that's because of the other 600 chemicals that the that the tobacco companies throw in there. Uh, they've perfected it. Uh, and that's what really causes the damage. Uh, the nicotine plant itself isn't damaging hardly at all. Uh, but still, inhaling steamed plant matter into your lungs is not good. Uh, so if you have the choice of smoking a lot to get high, or just taking one puff or two to get high, if you're really concerned about your health, I mean, clearly the stronger marijuana would be the better choice to make uh, because you have to smoke less of it. Uh, you know, if um, I, you could almost put the same to alcohol. It, they're, what they're implying is that because it's more potent, you're going to get so much more baked and you're going to be right out of your mind all the time. Well, that's not the case with alcohol. And that's got varying degrees of potency. Uh, you have everything from a wine cooler that's three or four percent alcohol, or a wine glass, uh, versus a thing of moonshine, which is eighty percent alcohol. And if you had a person who drinks a glass of wine that's that's uh, this full, uh, they're not gonna get a thing of moonshine that full and go, "Hey, no, same thing, wham!" and just hammer it back. Uh, you know, and even if they did that once, they'll never do it again. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's most of my opinions on marijuana. Uh, if you agree, post. If you disagree, post. Just post some comments. I'd love to hear what you guys got to say. All right, thanks.